Hello and welcome to this Bike Safe module where together we'll be looking at cornering. My name is Chris Tall, I'm a motorcycle cop in Northamptonshire. This session is intended to give an insight into the way the police learn how to deal with corners, bends or curves, however you prefer to describe them. Each corner is different. Get a corner right and it can feel tremendously satisfying. You hear of riders talk about their favourite corners or bendy stretches of road and often ride for many miles to enjoy them. However, get a corner wrong and the consequences can be fatal. Unfortunately, many collisions on bends are due to rider error, but with the right attitude and some extra knowledge, the likelihood of these collisions occurring can be reduced. For every motorcycle on the road, there are many more other road users who also contribute towards collisions, but ask yourself this, is there anything I can do to reduce the risk presented by others on our roads? The answer in many cases is almost certainly yes. By signing up for your bike safe course, you've taken the first step towards advanced rider training. You'll find as you progress, your observations will become better. You will read road features earlier, spot hazards presented by other road users more effectively, which ultimately will result in a more skilled way of negotiating corners. There's only so much that can be achieved from completing this module. Putting the theory into practice is paramount in achieving a more skillful ride. So speaking of the theory, there's lots more detail in our riding handbook, Motorcycle Roadcraft. I personally guarantee that all of this will enhance your overall riding experience and you too will become that rider constantly in search of the perfect corner. Before we start looking at some corners, I need to talk about the five key principles for safe cornering. I've already mentioned that every corner is unique, but these principles should be applied to each and every one. Have a go at identifying them. You should be in the correct position on the approach. You should be traveling at the correct speed. You should have the correct gear and you should be able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear on your own side of the road. And you should open the throttle enough to maintain a constant speed. This can also be described as maintaining a positive throttle. How did you get on with those? There are many different factors that can affect the ability to take corners and the ability of the bike. These include weather conditions, sloping road surface, and any load that might be carried by the bike, plus many others. I often get asked how you work out the best speed to take a corner. There's no single answer to this, but there are lots of things you can use to help plan for each corner and knowing where to look is a good start. The severity or sharpness of a bend is key to getting the most appropriate speed. But if you can't see all the way around the bend, how do you know how sharp it is? When you approach bends, what methods do you use to judge your speed? Make a note of them and we'll see in a minute if we came up with the same answers. So let's have a look at a bend to see what clues there are to help us. We'll start with this scene. You can see we are on the approach to a bend which goes round to the left. But what other information can we get? We will work from near to far for the purposes of identifying the information available. But of course when you're riding you may pick things up in a different order as you scan your observations. I was taught many years ago, more paint, more hassle. Local authorities will use more signage and road markings, where stretches of road have been especially problematic in the past. So first of all, there is a sign on the verge warning of a series of bends. These signs orientate to the road layout, so you can see that the first bend will be to the left. The sign is within a yellow background and backed up by a reduced speed now sign. This would suggest to me there have been previous incidents on this bend, so the local authority is emphasising the potential danger. This is then reinforced by an illuminated warning sign which draws attention to the potential danger even further. What do you think about the small white fences on either side of the road as we look closer to the bend? These are decorative and often carry the name of a village or town you're entering. So whilst not official warning signs, would you consider this valuable information? If you look closely and depending on the device you're using, you may be able to pick out the speed limit signs. Which even though not clear at this distance should indicate you that there is a speed restriction coming up. The presence of the chevrons help to confirm that the bend we're approaching can be considered hazardous. Have you ever heard of the limit point? And if so, do you use it? The limit point is the furthest point to which you have an uninterrupted view of the road. Once you've identified your limit point, watch to see what happens to it as you get closer to it. If it remains the same, then you may need to reduce your speed as you cannot see into the bend. Remember the key principles? You need to be able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear on your own side of the road. As the limit point starts to move away, you can match your speed with the speed the limit point is moving. Again, remember the principles. Maintain a positive throttle to obtain a constant speed around a bend. So can you identify the limit point from this distance? I would say that although it's not yet clear, you can certainly identify where it will be. 
and as we get closer it will become more obvious. How many vehicles can you see in this picture? Hopefully you can see two. The second vehicle on the bend is almost side onto us at this point, which provides some valuable information as to how sharp the bend is. Let's now watch the video. So we're gathering our information about the bend we're heading towards and building our riding plan. A couple of minutes ago, we went through the five key principles of safe cornering based on the information we have. Do you remember the first one? You should be in the correct position on the approach. Now it's a simple rule of thumb for the approach position. For a left hand bend, our approach position is to the off side of our lane. And for right hand bend, we approach over to the near side. But remember how vulnerable we are as riders and your position should not sacrifice your safety or stability. More on that soon. So, assuming safety and stability is not compromised, when we identify the direction of the road ahead, we can start to position ourselves to get the best view around the corner. This should remain flexible and can be altered if required, for example, a large vehicle traveling in the opposite direction or a pothole on our intended line. So let's start by watching a left-hand bend. Position to the offside of our lane and assess the limit point. Slow using the brakes if required and select the correct gear. Monitor the limit point as it starts to move away. Use positive throttle to match your speed to that of the limit point. Continue to gather information on the road ahead. And now right hand bend. Position to the near side of our lane and assess the limit point. Adjust speed and gear if required. Use the limit point as it starts to move away and maintain positive throttle to match our speed. Maintain the safest position that gives the best view around the bend. And continue to gather information as we exit the bend. And look ahead to assess the next bend. Hopefully we now have an insight into how we approach bends and use the five principles to negotiate them safely. But what is the best position to be in once we've exited the bend? That depends very much on the road ahead. It's often the case that left bends are followed by right bends and, and vice versa. As you start to exit the bend, extend your observations towards the next bend and identify which way it goes. Your exit position should then be the approach position for the next bend. We would refer to this as linking bends together. There are some examples of this coming up soon. I mentioned a few moments ago about not sacrificing safety or stability for position. The next video gives an example of where adopting a position offering a safer route round a bend would be used. This video provides an example of where safety and stability has more importance than position for view. Whilst gathering all the information for the left hand bend there are some important observations. The yellow skip lorry we've just passed has turned out of a quarry on the right hand side. On the approach to the quarry entrance, there's mud on the road from vehicles leaving, which could have an effect on tyre grip, especially if braking or steering. We need to take a position out of the mud if possible and slow down to a safer speed. It then becomes apparent that the road surface is poor caused by the heavy vehicles leaving the quarry. Whilst this would not be the preferred position through the bends under good conditions, it is the safest in these circumstances. Let's just watch that again from a different angle. I hope this module has provided a useful insight into cornering. There's so much more yet to come as you progress through your advanced training. And like me, you will continue to learn every time you ride a motorcycle. Motorcycle Roadcraft has much more information on cornering and it provides excellent descriptions of subjects such as the forces involved in how safety features work and how they can affect rider behaviour. It also provides some valuable learning in relation to the effects of skidding and what you can do to minimise these risks. It can also answer questions you may have about counter steering or how you position yourself on the bike. There's no substitute for practical application. Learn and remember the safe cornering principles and take as much information as you can from motorcycle roadcraft. Then practice, practice and practice. Thank you for your attention and good luck with any remaining modules.